sekolah sebab kau yang kau ini kau ini nama untuk kata sama watahi neni yang kau yang kau ini nak dah nol oh kau ini nongki dalor dah dia kau ni orang kau nong kau ini nong cik nak dekat dia kau nong kau ini cikat warna tak kuat ya nong kau tuan hagi lo awak kau ada cik ni kau nol dah kalau cik ni kau lihat nong kau awak ni set Cik kaya dah sehat, nen hak aku nen cik ni dua warna dan nen dua. Dia tu kunci tu ni wak ni wak ni wak kaya dah nen hak kata dia cik ni dua warna dah. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Olive Velm. My English name and my Oneida name is Watahi, and it means she travels the road. And I'm my dad. My late dad used to always say. You've been named appropriately because you're always on the road. <laughs> and, and I have been, I've traveled a lot for the language since I've worked for the language center for the past 30 years, 30 years or so. And I've also, I'm also quite, quite active in a church. I'm an Anglican and I'm also a traditional person. I never lost my traditional ways, even though I joined the church. Anyway, I've had the opportunity to travel I have traveled to Brazil, and uh, that was about 25 years ago. I was in Brazil for 10 days, and it was uh, it had to do with uh, churches in solidarity with women, looking at, at the women, the, the the conditions that the women were in in the third world. So I was I that was my my uh, once in a lifetime experience. And since working for the language center, like I said, I've been there for th about 30 years, more than 30 years. And uh, I've traveled to different uh, communities. I've been to your community, Akwesasne, a lot of times because I also served on council for 12 years. I was a counselor for 12 years for our NIDA band. And like I said, I've never left the reserve. I've always been here. Uh, and I have never, uh, like some of my uh, people that are uh, my age have, they went to residential school and lost their language, which, but I didn't. I have always kept my language, even though I was punished in school for speaking the language. I was made to scrub the floor when they heard me speaking my language, but I never ever gave it up. And then in my later years, I've worked. I've worked as uh, I've worked in a nursing home. I worked there for about eight years, and then I went back to school. I did my. Um, um, I got my certificate to teach Oneida language, which I uh, I never really did work in a school because I've always worked with adults, and uh, and I I just thank my late husband because he was my inspiration of doing this, you know, going to, uh, going to work for the language center uh, because he was on council too. And he was always portfolio for the language and he didn't speak himself, but, but I always did. So he always encouraged me. Why don't you go to the link? Why don't you be, go to the meetings? Ah, I'd rather go to bingo, you know, and that was my, that was the way I felt at the time, because I thought language was going to be here forever. So finally, I did go and I've never left. My one encouragement or advice to these young people that are coming up. And like I said, we're so we've only got 38 speakers left in Oneida. When I started the language, we had 263. Now we're down to 38. And most of us are in our late, like I'm 81 now. And most of our people that speak the language are in their 70s, like, you know, like, so we're really, we're really getting up there. That's why I guess we're, it's so, uh, I'm encouraged to see these young people, young women, uh, trying to learn and carry on after we're gone, you know, that because the language dies with you. And uh, and I guess that's my that's my desire or wish that more young women would come in, into the language because they're the ones that are that are having children now, and they're the ones that's going to be able to pass it on to their children, the language that that are our language, and and I think that's my wish or that that would be my 
encouragements to these young mothers. Learn the language and learn our ways because once we're gone, that what we have, the long language that the knowledge that we have will go with us. So these young women, I, I just encourage them. And I, I'm just so glad there's, that there's so many young women now that are, that are taking on this role to learn our uh, language. And also because without language, you can't learn your culture. Sigoli swakwe kahnigiosta ni yungets wagnyanda ni mikih the Lord on yote agani wakahon jod ganto ang kahoene tegnake. Hello, my name is Erica Elijah. I'm Turtle Clan from Oneida Nation of the Thames here in Southern Ontario. Um, I'm paired with um, my master speaker Olive Elm. And we've been working together for the past few months. Six months. Yeah, the past six months on um, <clears throat> language in Master Apprentice. So I'm, I'm learning our language. I've been learning the language full time for the past six years. Um, I still don't consider myself a fluent speaker, but I'm hoping to get there one day. I do a lot of work in the community um, I've taught as a language instructor for an adult language program here at home and also worked with a developing a language nest in the community. And with COVID, we've had to move everything online. So we have some experience making language videos and tutorials online, making digital resources for adult learners to teach and work with small children. I um, just recently finished a contract with our early years programming in the community where um, Olive and I worked as a team and we facilitated language instruction and resource development in the Oneida language for all of our early years programs. And we've just recently been awarded a two-year grant to do a part-time language nest in our community also. So very busy. We have a lot of awesome work ahead of us and we're really looking forward to this opportunity and getting to network and get to know all of the other pairs that are together. Um, and I look forward to meeting everybody. And my one piece of advice for Indigenous young women would be that it's never too late. Um, it's never too late to start learning and to find out about those responsibilities and to make those connections to your identity and who you are. It's never too late to do that. Tokniga Wanak.